Namaste. So the last few days I've been talking about Zen and the Zen view of reality, of the world, and of the self. And what Ramana Maharshi calls the self, Zen calls universal mind. But it's the same thing. The difference between an enlightened person, a self-realized person, and one who is not self-realized, is that they see things in a different context. They see the same things. The world, the mind, the body, the self. But they see it in a different order, in a different context. And because context creates meaning, something we've been pounding on <laughs> for the last 10 years on this channel, it gives a new meaning to everything in life. So let's take a look at the difference between the conventional view of the world and the view from the Ajatavada. Ajatavada means that the world is seen as unborn ajata. This is the view of the self-realized person, the enlightened person. So let's first look at the conventional view. In the conventional view, the world contains everything else. So the world appears to be full of objects. And one of these objects is the body. And within the body, there's the mind. And within the mind, there's the self. In this case, we're talking about self with a lowercase s, the empirical self, the individual. So this puts the individual in a very much dependent position. The individual is contained within the mind, which is within the body, which is within objects, which is within the world. So the existentialists, philosophers, uh, they describe this very well, very clearly. And they called it hell. And they say there's no exit. In other words, we understand the human condition and it's suffering. But we don't know what is the remedy. We don't know any cure. But the Buddha came along and before him, many other teachers in the Vedic line. And they said, no, the conventional way of looking at the world is not right. Because when one is enlightened, when one is self-realized, one sees it differently. How is that? Well, let's look at the Ajatta view. In the Ajatta view, the self, with a capital S, is the universal mind, is everything, Brahman. And within the universal mind, there is the individual mind. And within the individual mind is the body. And within the body, there are the senses and their objects, which are, altogether, the world. Now, just see the difference in perspective between these two views. In the conventional view, the self, the individual, is in a very vulnerable, dependent position, subject to the conditions in the other levels of reality. But in the Ajatta view, the self is supreme. The self is Brahman. The self is God. And it contains everything else. 
the mind, the senses and their objects, huh? and all the things that we call in together the world. So how is this possible? How can it be that the self contains the world and not the other way around? Well, it's very simple. In the scriptures, both Vedic and Buddhist, it's described that the world is a creation of the mind. In other words, we create the world by the way we see, by the way we look, by the context that we live in, by the perspective that we hold, by the point of view that we look from. And because context creates meaning, the meaning of everything that we encounter is completely different. You see, the enlightened person sees the same world, the same mind and senses, the same body, the same objects, but sees them from a completely different perspective. And because context creates meaning, I'll say it again, <laughs> the meaning of these things is completely different from the conventional view. In the Ajata view, the meaning of self is the supreme, the absolute, God, Brahman. And the meaning of the mind, then, is the set of views that allows us to interact with things around us, or within us, in this case. So then the mind creates the world, including the body, the senses, the sense objects, and all their interactions. So this is what is meant when enlightened people say the world is an illusion. Okay? We know from seeing, from direct experience, that the world is not what it appears to be. And the example that's used so many times is the rope and the snake, or the mirage in the desert, or a phantom, a ghost. Huh? If someone goes out at night and they see a fence post, but they mistake it for a ghost. Huh? Maybe someone has put their robe over the fence post to dry. And so it's flapping in the wind, you know, and it looks like a ghost. Woo! <laughs> but there is no ghost. See? There is, just like there is no snake, just like there is no water in the desert, it's a mirage. So it's not real. It's only a perception. Just like in a dream. In a dream, we can dream of so many things happening. And we even react emotionally to those things as if they were real. But then when the dream breaks and we wake up, we see that none of that was real. Even though it affected us emotionally as if it was real. So this is the thing about the world. <laughs> this is why we say the world is an illusion. Because we see it in one way, but the actuality is something very different. Just like the snake and the rope. The snake is dangerous. It can bite you. It has poison. It can kill you. But, of course, a rope is just completely passive, right? Has no danger with it at all. So, in the same way, in the orthodox view, the ordinary view, 
of the world. The world is something very dangerous. Huh? It can kill us. It can bite us. <laughs> it can do so many things. But in the Ajata view, the world isn't real. It's a dream. So what can it do to us? There's no need to be afraid of it. You can relax. You're, it's okay. You know, all these terrible bad things that seem to be uh, possible or that could happen are simply illusions. They're simply dreams. And the proof that they're dreams is that when we go to sleep at night, the whole world vanishes. If the world was real, even when we go to sleep, it would still be there. But it's not. It goes away and we find ourselves in a different world. The dream world. Huh? Where is that? Well, it's in the mind. But so is the ordinary world. And the proof of that is that it's temporary. It disappears. And then next morning when we wake up, it comes back into manifestation from the point of view of the self, from the point of view of consciousness, from the point of view of unconditioned awareness. The world is simply a temporary illusion. And it's conditioned by our ego, our desires. What's the difference between something good happening and something bad happening? Well, what we judge as good is that which conforms to our desires. And what we judge as bad is something that goes against our desires. Isn't it? So try to understand. Good and bad are created exclusively by our desires. There are all kinds of things happening in the world, and they're going to happen anyway, whether we're there to see them or not. But whether they're good or bad depends exclusively on our desires, because that determines how we see them. You see, it's a context again. Context creates meaning. Desire creates good and bad. Pleasurable and unpleasurable, right and wrong, depending on our views. So it is our views that create the right and wrong, the good and bad, the pleasurable and unpleasurable, and all the other qualities in the world. Simply our view. So there's no physical reality actually. The only reality is consciousness. And the world arises in consciousness when we take a certain view called Jagrat, or so-called waking consciousness. It's actually a kind of dream. Because we have created this ego, this individual self, the empirical self, and that self has all kinds of desires and judges the world according to them, measures everything that happens in terms of these desires related to the ego. See, if you ask a kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? And let's say they want to be, you know, a jet pilot, right? That's a common one. Uh, they start to measure everything by how does this help me become a jet pilot? You see, it's the view of becoming, the view of the conditioned self, the view of the mind that depends or that creates good and bad, right and wrong, pleasure and pain. Well, you might say, well, what about, you know, if you hurt your body? 
Well, if I hurt my body, it seems displeasurable because I have a desire to have a body. And I have a desire that my body should be whole. And on and on and on. So the point I want to make here is that the ajatta view, the view of the enlightened person, is simply a different context, a different point of view of the same old world, the same body, mind, huh? the same ego, the same everything. But because it's in a different context, everything has a much different meaning. And this is why the enlightened person is always overwhelmed with bliss. Such a deep, steady, solid bliss that really bliss isn't the right word for it because bliss can come in and bliss can go. But uh, I don't think we have a proper word. Ananda, huh? samadhi. Absorption in trance. This is the cause of the ajatta view, which is the what you see and the way you see things when you reach full enlightenment. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.